somebody accidentally misses their train stop because of an audiobook I worked on, that's a success. Hi, my name is Caitlin Gehring. I am the associate publisher of Harper Audio Audiobook Production. My role as an associate publisher of Harper Audio is kind of split in a couple of different directions. One, I'm overseeing our entire um, audio production team. Everybody who's involved, this is the producers, this is our production managers, our managing ed team, and our audio coordinator. I also work really closely with the print side to coordinate our title list, as well as to just make sure that everybody knows as much as they can know about what's going on in the audio world. I also occasionally direct from home as well. You gotta love the magic of technology. I can call in to a studio anywhere around the world via Zoom or Skype and work with some of the amazing talent that we have on our projects. I think the first book that really showed me the power and impact that the perfect casting of a narrator has on an audiobook was The Looking Glass Wars by Frank Bador, narrated by Gerard Doyle. I remember that moment that I was just like, oh my God, I can't stop listening. I need to know what happens next. The power of Gerard's voice to just build this world in my mind and just how much the way he told the story and the voices he gave the characters brought the story to another level in a way that reading it on the page had never quite done for me and really helped solidify just the creativeness and the power of listening to audio. Meet the heroic, passionate, monstrous, vengeful denizens of this parallel world as they battle each other with AD-52s and orb generators. Sometimes I get asked, like, do I have a favorite narrator? And to be honest, I do not. But there are certain elements that I really love, and those are the folks that aren't just reading the story, but really are telling you the story, and they are able to do these really distinct character voices. The snake rolled its eyes. Perhaps this will go faster if I take a form more pleasing to your kind. Or even if they can't do very distinct character voices, they're able to shift their voice ever so slightly to make them a little bit different so you can always tell who's talking and just really pull you into the story and connect you to the emotional core. Ew, were you spying on us? Another one asked. Norris glimpsed into the mirror-walled dance studio behind them. You're kidding, right? Elizabeth Acevedo, Poet X, Clapping E. Lynn, with fire on high at this point, but she is such an amazingly dynamic creator. And she has a background as a spoken word poet, which is so phenomenal to work with. This is not a place to create more muses. Teaching creative writing is like convincing skin to graft itself after being wounded. So we should not teach and harm, they must be mutually exclusive. Every word counts and how the rhythm and the musicality of verse and story is there. My path at HarperCollins was relatively straight compared to a lot of publishing paths. I went to the University of Missouri straight out of high school um, with a major in journalism and a minor in creative writing. I was fortunate enough to be able to intern at the literary magazine that's on the University of Missouri campus, the Missouri Review. And I had a background in radio. I was a convergence journalism major. And they wanted to start an audiobook version of their magazine. And I was like, well, I know how to record things, um, so maybe I can help them with this. And during that process, I realized that audiobook production and audiobooks in general were actually a career, which was fabulous. All right, so how an audiobook gets made. It starts off first with the producer reading the book. We create a casting list and we share it with the author because we always want to make sure that we're matching the voice that's inside their head. We work on scheduling it with the out of house producer as well as casting the narrator and getting everything squared away so we can ensure that the audiobook and print book go on sale at the same time. Everything gets recorded, then edited, then goes through quality control to make sure that we do indeed say all the words in the proper order. We release it to the retailers and shortly thereafter it comes to you guys, it comes to the listeners. 
my one true love is the children's audiobook space. I absolutely love working in YA. The stories are always so exciting and fresh, and you're seeing some really creative blending of genre, of storytelling format, and just the stories themselves absolutely delights. If you're just starting college or about to start college and you're thinking about getting into the audiobook side of the industry, come. Welcome, we can't wait to have you. Uh, the more the merrier. 